Grace and peace, a few brief announcements. Uh, we'll be having a communion gathering in the uh, top parking lot on January 17th. Uh, there's gonna be two separate uh, groupings there. So please uh, let us know when you want to be coming. Then um, the 2021 stewardship uh, campaign is in full swing. You should have got uh, some initial information about that. Uh, Epiphany Fellowship newsletter is on both the website as well as has been sent in the email. Please uh, check that out. The annual meeting will be January 24th. Details will be forthcoming. Uh, then also, we, we are hoping to set up a Bible study about the Apostle Paul. And we have, uh, we've been asking for date dates that work for people. It's going to be three sessions, so we're not locking you in forever, right? And uh, we would we have at least a sense of one of the dates. We still are hoping to do a second for those who can't make the one. So please fill out the form to let us know when you would like to come for the Bible study. And then finally, there's a way to submit questions to the pastor. So we already have had one good one that I'll be uh, dealing with uh, via video shortly. And uh, any theological, any sort of emotional, pastoral, historical, etc. questions you might have, please uh, submit via form and I will do my best to answer them. And if I don't know the answer because pastor ain't perfect, he doesn't know all the things, right? I will uh, look around and I usually know resources to find the answers for you. Grace, peace, and mercy, let us prepare our hearts for worship with the confession and forgiveness of our sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is from Genesis, first chapter, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he came, was coming out, up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. and mercy to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. So here we are, back in Mark's Gospel, back at the baptism. John in the wilderness among sinners pointing to Jesus. Here we are, Jesus' baptism, where the heavens are torn apart, rent asunder, a whole bore from heaven to earth, that we might know this man, Jesus. He is God born. God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth 
in the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. Time itself is transformed. Holiness leaks into everything. God soaks the world with spirit. This Jesus finds a man in need of healing and confronts the religious leaders of his day over a question. A question about Sabbath. Asking if the Sabbath, the day of rest and liberation, is holy, how does our observation of the Sabbath square with that holiness? By our actions and our inactions, are we saying that holiness is for life or for death, for good or evil? And then he does the life-giving thing, the good thing. He heals the man. God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. Some of the disciples go with Jesus up the mountain and are met with the law and the prophets in the persons of Moses and Elijah. And again, the heavens tear open. And again, a voice declares that Jesus is the Son of God. Heaven torn, God born. God is on the loose and nothing will be the same. If you didn't yet know of God's radical presence in a new way, Jesus ups the ante as we continue to go forward in this Gospel of Mark. A paralyzed man is brought to him and Jesus confronts the religious authorities of his day, again, who are questioning his religious authority, his holiness. Jesus heals and, and here's the kicker, the, the worrisome part for all around, Jesus forgives. Jesus forgives sin, makes the profane holy, the cursed blessed. So again, he is tearing apart, tearing open the division between God and humanity, right? He is transforming holiness. He is making the cursed in this case, blessed. <clears throat> God is acting in a radically new way. Once unholiness was catchy, now holiness is catchy. We soak it up like a sponge soaks up water. When we are near it, we become it. This is a grand reversal of the way holiness was thought of in most, uh, most Jewish literature of the time. Instead, it was holiness, pardon me, it was unholiness that expand out, that was catchy. But Jesus transforms that and flips that, and all of a sudden, holiness is what is catchy instead of unholiness. God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. These confrontations escalate until Jesus arrives in Jerusalem, the holy city, where he is betrayed and executed. And at that moment of his death, the barrier between holy and profane, the curtain of the temple separating heaven from earth, the curtain at the entrance into the holy of holies where God is said to reside, the curtain is torn in two. And at that same moment, a centurion sees Jesus and says, Surely he is the Son of God. Even at his own execution, this same message as we see at the transfiguration, as we see at Jesus' baptism. Heaven torn, God born. God is on the loose and nothing will be the same. Now Luther was of course struck by this truth as well. God comes down. God acts first. Holiness is catchy. Grace is real. And he looks at the ways holiness has been segmented by the religious authorities of his day.
And he did the only faithful thing, tore it apart. In his day, it was believed that the only roles and the only relationships that mattered, at least mattered to God, mattered to the whole scheme of what holiness meant, what it means to be a religious, holy, godly person. So in his day, the only roles and relationships that mattered to God were those lived out by priests and bishops and monks. There alone did holiness reside. To which Luther replied, no. Emphatic, no. I was almost going to add a little uh, expletive on the end of that, which Luther probably would approve of, but I don't think uh, we would hear. No, Luther replies. We are holy on account of our baptism. Being immersed into Jesus' baptism, Jesus' transfiguration, Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus' resurrection, any role, any relationship that a Christian has, be it an ordained minister or an orthodontist, a mother or a monk, a daughter or a draftsman or a deacon. All of it, every last relationship we have, is soaked in spirit. Christians are always dripping with their baptism. God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. You won't believe the amount of worry and the amount of anxiety that we clergy and church folk writ large are pouring into the current COVID crisis. That we have to do church differently to keep our communities and our neighbors safe. It scares us. I want to be clear, it scares us, it hurts, it makes us angry. But fear not. Fear not. And I, of course, say this to myself as much as I say it to the lot of you. God's holiness has always overflowed from walls confining, always brings heaven to earth, always looses transforming terror into transfiguration, always reminding us that we are God's beloved children. God is on the loose and things will never be the same. Nothing will be the same. That's the promise of our baptism as well. Our own baptism, whether we remember it as a young person or as an adult or whether it was something that happened before our memories could even form. It is still the promise because it's not a promise that, that we have to uphold somehow, but instead it is the promise of God, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise promised in the baptism of Jesus. Anything, anything that would separate us from the love of God is torn open. Anything we forget, anytime we forget that we are beloved, baptized children of God, and we are, you are, know that, please. Remember, you are baptized. You are God-born. Torn and God-born. Beloved in Christ, God is on the loose. Nothing will be the same. Amen and alleluia. Amen. Let us confess together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man.
For our sake he was crucified under a Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all the people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beasts, and for all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards, care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for laborers busy both day and night, and for peacemakers amid strife, especially Sammy, Daniel, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, and Justin. That God inspire all people to use their strength wisely. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy O God. God. For the sick and those who provide medical care for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy. For the lonely and those who provide companionship for all who suffer, especially Lance, Irwin, Bill, Susuko, Bonnie, Walter, Mary, Robert, Julia, Leroy, Dave, Clarence, Katie, Beth, and Sarah. That God shower compassion, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For the congregation gathered here, for students returning to school, for those seeking renewal in their daily work, that all the beloved of God experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
be to God.